my initial reaction when I first walked into the house, or when I first saw the house, was that there was a, there was a very big wow factor in it. to like the finest details. Like you can really see like how well thought out the Baba house looks like. Most people uh, when they talk about the Peranakan culture, the impression that they have in mind would be uh, somewhere at the turn of the 20th century. Because the Peranakan Chinese identity, I think, emerged uh, quite strongly during that period of time. Growing up in, in this house, my grandmother, she is the one who taught me most about the culture, the traditions. So you, you come to value all religions, all races, to live together with them, to work together with them, to share with them. Tanshi, I was often with Willie buy some old告诉我他本身想要做一个私人的博物馆结果就介绍彼得利跟他联络大概他们谈了有好久的时间才成立这个Baba House A very seldom do you get to sort of visit an actual Baba House that is preserved um, as if that you know you are living in that time, the golden period of the, the Peranaka time so um, this actually helps um, to, to help visitors to better understand uh, the, the Peranakan culture, their history, you know, uh, what happened to them in the peak and what happened to them thereafter. I think for the older generation of the Peranakans, they are very carefree, um, uh, very proud of their tradition, whereas for the younger generation of the Peranakans, they tend to be a little bit more uh, reserve about um, sharing uh, uh, their identity. If you want to say that the Pranakan culture is slowly eroding away, in a way it's true. Because less people are practicing it, less people are aware of it. There are very few places you can go to to Acquire for me, I think it definitely is a personal loss, losing this Pranakan identity and culture. Because uh, it, there's so much rich intricacies weaved into it, we don't get to see, we get to see so much. In terms of even like everything boils down in terms of how like the family is run, how the food is prepared, how like the furniture is designed. Like it's all so detailed and it's something that like I feel we will never really see nowadays and it's been very washed by Western culture, Western media. 
Although I'm not a Peranakan, um, but um, my interest uh, in the Peranakan culture actually started when I was a little girl. Uh, my mother, she herself is not Peranakan, but she used to like, whenever she has to attend dinner party, big function, she will bring me to people's park to buy the cloth and then I'll follow her to the tailor and then you know and, and then she'll be transformed wearing this really beautiful kabaya and since that time I've told myself I want to be like that so pretty. Uh, I think what's especially close to me in the Brandon culture is food. Like I also realized that like I've been eating like very traditional dishes like um, Babi bakula, uh, rendangs, uh, kue sala, kue lapis, things like this. I mean, I think everyone is like agreeable that like Peranakan food is a very big part of even like Singapore culture. I, I think that's the, the thing about culture that there's always a trace of the past, or maybe sometimes more than a trace, but there will always be adaptations due to what's practical for the moment. Like, I think people think like Brana culture is a very, I won't say archaic, but I think it's a very old-fashioned kind of thing. But I think there's beauty to this like old-fashionedness because it's just looking back at like where you come from, where and who you were or who your family is now and how like it's reached this level and what your family was in the past. changes go on throughout our history throughout the year. You cannot stop change. You have to live with change. You have to change with change. That's why when, when, when we first started this Baba uh, House, I emphasized on these people who are uh, elevate that Baba House must be a living museum.